If you've ever vibe coded an app only to rework pretty much everything from the ground up, you know the pain more than anyone of redoing web hooks, recreating databases, resetting up tables, and pretty much breaking apart your entire app just to accommodate a bunch of feedback that you wish you had at the beginning. And the harsh part of vibe coding is that one single vaguely worded prompt can cause a spaghetti code mess where you're pretty much way worse off than you even started with. That's why my mock data vibe coding strategy is probably going to be a cheat code for a lot of you less technical vibe coders. It lets you build the entire experience end to end without ever having to worry about the back end. In most tutorials, there's almost an obsession of going from an idea to hooking up to something like a super base to an end to end workflow right away. And the real way to build a product is you build a prototype or you build an MVP but a very functional MVP, but functional doesn't mean that it has to be functional on the back end. It can just be functional on the front end. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to vibe plan better, prototype faster, and overall avoid the reworking trap. Let's dive in. So in this video, I'm gonna use Bolt primarily, but you can use whatever you want, whether it's lovable, replit, insert name of tool here, it applies to all. And I'm actually gonna show you a cheat code within a cheat code, because you'll notice I'm using an AI browser, specifically, I'm using Perplexity Comet, and while for the most part, it's on the wait list for anyone that's not on the max plan, you can use pretty much any AI browser like Dia browser, or whatever browser that's AI enabled, and you'll be able to recreate a lot of what I do now. And even if you don't wanna use an AI browser, you could just use, on the side, a ChatGPT or a Claude, or perplexity research to be able to create and help you form the prompt. So in this case, I'm gonna click on the assistant tab right here, and then I'm gonna be extra lazy. And now we're gonna create a sample app without me actually writing the prompt myself. So what I'm gonna ask perplexity to do here is go and research the latest and greatest documentation about bolt.new, watch a series of YouTube videos to upskill on how to draft and craft the best prompts, and most importantly, I'm gonna tell it to write in the prompt that we don't care to make anything functional. Just create a series of mock data for each and every element in the app. All right, so let's dictate. Okay, so I wanna be able to draft a prompt for bolt.new, so I want you to take on the persona of an expert prompt engineer. I want you to search for the latest and greatest documentation on bolt.new, watch some YouTube videos that might be helpful to master the skill, and then draft a prompt that will help me build an app that will allow someone to quickly build their own learning plan, kind of like combining Lego blocks and creating their own curriculum using the best and most common areas like normal AI, machine learning, generative AI, and making it a very easy experience to create your own self-learning curriculum. I want you, most importantly, to draft a prompt that emphasizes that every single part of this prompt, or let's say the app itself, is gonna be mock data. So there should be not only different screens, different options, different tabs, but each and every tab should have some dummy data or mock data so that every single button we click, every single tab we navigate to has some sample data. So when we click on something, it looks like it's working even though there's no backend that's actually set up. So a bit of a mouthful, but sending that over will allow us to create a prompt and then I can show you how you can even be lazier if you're using a browser. In under a minute, you'll see here it went through a series of documentation, some YouTube videos, and then it came up with this mega prompt. And I won't read it in full, but you'll see as we go through, you'll see it says act as a world-class AI prompt engineer and full stack web designer. Your task is the following. This is the part we really care about. Build a web app for creating a custom self-learning curriculum builder inspired by Lego blocks modularity metaphor. Core requirements, the app is strictly for demonstration. All screens, sections, tabs, lists, and pop-ups must be filled with mock data. Dummy lessons, modules, users, stats, etc. No real backend, no real API only, fake sample data everywhere. So you'll see here, it's really good at going in depth as to what every single piece should look like. And I would have never put the effort to come up with what the dummy data should actually be. So we can just take this, and then we'll take out the parts that we don't need, right? We'll take this part out here. We don't need that. And then we can remove the bottom part. And what's awesome is whether or not you, again, use a browser or an assistant like this or not, you could be using ChatGPT. 
You could also ask it, if you don't know what your idea is going to really be, to create a PRD, a product requirements document, to go back and forth and vibe plan the idea and really flesh it out before you even get to the prompting stage. But it's the idea that you can go back and forth. And what's awesome is if you use a browser, it sees what's on your screen. So as it comes up, you could tell it, analyze this actual app and give me your feedback to know what we should do next. So I'm going to send this over by submitting right here and we'll wait for the first iteration. And after a few minutes, you'll see it'll take a bit longer than usual because it's not only creating the sample screens, but also creating all the sample data. So if we go and pop this up in a new tab, we'll click on connect to project. All right. And then we'll be able to click on different parts of the app. You should see right here a bunch of mock-up data. We didn't have to actually connect the Superbase and add all of these features ourselves or enter them. When we click on things, right, the next prompt we're going to add is when we click on play, for example, it should do something. But I want to see tab by tab. It looks like you can do things like edit profile. Good. Update preferences doesn't work. Let's go to profile, share. So we have some things here. Okay good prototype on that side settings it would be cool if light and dark actually worked but this is a demo so that one doesn't necessarily have to work it's more so how can you convey the vision without having to put in all the work and doing all the setup before this is even going to be the final version of the product you're going to build if we click on start to challenge ideally it should do something so now because I have an AI browser in this case you could use your own words or your own assessment I can tell it can you go through this sample app, go through step by step, try and click on things, try and see what's non-functional, and come up with a prompt for my Vibe coding app called Bolt.new that will tell it to make the things that you don't find functional when you click around functional. And basically say, even though this is great that we have some dummy data across all the screens, one, it looks kind of squished, two, when you click on things like student view, or in this case, start challenge, as you click from tab to tab, go and see what's working, what's not working, and tell it to create dummy data for even those sub features as well. So we could do this naturally ourselves again, but what I can do now is Comet can take control of the screen and then look at it and use it the way someone that has no idea how to use this app would, which is awesome. It's kind of like getting user research without needing the users to begin with because you have an AI that's pretty mediocrely intelligent. You'll see right here, it's clicking through tab by tab. It's collecting some observations as it's clicking around and it might click on things that I didn't even click on. I didn't even go to module marketplace, for example, and it is. So one little thing here you'll see in this thinking says, I noticed the analytics tab shows the same content as the instructor panel. It's checking whether or not the add module works and it's really giving it the try and a test that a human would actually do if they were testing it out for the first time. And this is awesome. It comes up with this step-by-step -step assessment of what works well. So all major dashboard tabs seem to have some robust sample data. Curriculum Builder shows or supports drag and drop modules, progress panels, achievement, et cetera, et cetera. And then it goes through what's missing, which is sub tab and sub feature depth, which are words that I couldn't even come up with. In many places, clicking further, in particular, clicking a module achievement badge or toggling student view, instructor view, or going deeper in analytics does nothing or calls only superficial content. In this case, that's fine. And then it goes through the button and detailed interactions. And then it says here, take my existing self-learning app and make every UI element, modal and tab fully interactive with rich dummy data. And the ultimate demo where every action, click, toggle, blah, 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 overlays, feels like it's truly alive and fun to use. And then again, it emphasizes it over and over again. So clicking start challenge, clicking on achievement badges should pop up things. And then it's a pretty beefy prompt. We'll take this as is. And naturally we could tell it to auto inject it into Bolt, but I will do that little bit of work for you here. I'll remove this. We don't need that. And yeah, I think we could remove the first part. Take my existing app. There we go. And then send it over. And after another hefty iteration, like you can see here, we made all those changes or it made all those changes for fully interactive elements. We have enhanced user experience with module detail modal. So quiz modal, badge modal. And what this tells me is when we click on these buttons, we should have loading states, some previews, etc. And let's pop in. So I would imagine that something like start challenge should have some form of demo pop up. 
So if we click that, you'll see here we have some form of wizard. And then we can go to the end, submit. And then you can see we didn't have to actually make this functional. I can walk you through the story of how I'm thinking through the app, how the user journey looks like, and then we can go and iterate and see whether or not it's the right approach. And then if we close that, let's go to the different tabs. Let's go and click on, let's say, surprise me. Does it do something? And even that, even the simulated action can be created as mock-up data. If we go to module marketplace, add to curriculum, looks like we have a little modal here. If I click on preview, I would sincerely hope that these courses would actually pop up. And there we go. We have an overview of what it would look like. If we click on curriculum, there we go, amazing. You can click on review. Okay, and then this is an example of a sub sub feature. So now we'd be able to go to the next level. So imagine it's like a ladder and we're going down this ladder one level at a time. And then as we go from the high level features, having mock-up data, we then go to the sub features and then the sub sub features. And then we can keep iterating on this. And this vibe coding is very stress free because it's a matter of just going back and forth. And if there's an error, it's probably some form of sentence fragment or code fragment where it can resolve itself really quickly. But you can go from an idea to thinking through the entire app, the journey, in a matter of minutes to literally hours, you could have something you could put into the hands of a user, they can click around, or you can have an AI click around, and then you can get some really tactical feedback. And I can keep going from tab to tab here. If I go to settings, this obviously wouldn't work, but let's see something like uh, instructor view, for example, at the top here. It looks like we have a different instructor view than we do a student view, so that's awesome as well. And then if I hide this momentarily, looks like we have some live users. This could probably need some additional updates, but overall you can see in a very short amount of time, we can go from an idea, having in this case an AI test out the app, which we can do over and over again. I could do that process probably three or four more times, collect more feedback, feed it back into Bolt, and now we have a beautiful feedback loop before we even put this into the hand of your client, your customer, or your user. And the whole point of this is that you vibe plan so much that once you have this foundation up and running, you can export these projects from these apps to something like a GitHub, and then bring it into something like a Claude Code, or a Cursor, or a Windsurf, and really make it production ready, because the entire foundation will be there, and all you have to do is start replacing all that mock data with real functional input, that you can then obsess about building the super base, building the database, creating the web hooks, because at least you'll be grounded in knowing that even if things might change, they might not be a 180 degree change from your initial vision. I hope that's helpful and it helps you save hours of banging your head against the wall before you even need to. That's pretty much it for the video. If you wanna see more stuff like this, exclusive content, feel free to check the first link in the description below for my exclusive AI community. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.